and then going into the B flat 7. Hey dear friends, here I'm back. I want to talk about Misty. Uh, I lost my book and so I uh, stole it from the internet bag. <laughs> But anyways, I want to talk about Misty and what Chopaz does there and there's a place where he's playing some like 16251 progression but of course tweaking it using secondary dominance, triton substitutions, you name it. And first of all I'm going to try to play it for you and then I'm going to just dissect it together with you and also finding ways how you can play the same stuff in a different way, also how you can break it down a little bit in more general ideas so that you can also use it. about 1625 for a minute. We are in E flat, a 1625 in with the diatonic chords, right? Would be like E flat major 7, C minor 7, F minor 7 and B flat 7. One of the first things that we can think about if we want to tweak a 1625 would be to leave the tonic as is, you can play either an E flat major chord, maybe an E flat 6 chord, both work fine. But the rest of the chords, you can tweak them into a dominant 7th chord. So you could tweak the C minor 7 into a C7, the F minor 7 into an F7, and the B flat 7 is already a dominant 7th. But this is one of the first things that you could think about and you can also use a lot of options and alteration with those chords. By the way, I also have a Patreon channel. If you want to support me, find all the PDFs that I made so far and there's a weekly video. Secondly, you could think about transforming each and every of those chords into its tritone version. We leave the tonic where it is again, but then instead of playing a C7, play a G flat 7, we leave the top note just for fun. <laughs> then the next chord would have been an F7, leaving the top note for the triton substitute which is a B7 and then going into the B flat 7, leaving the top note. This leaving the top note thing is actually pretty useful. If you can try to do that it glues the chord together in a nice way. you could think about is putting all your chords back in the way that they have been before like E flat major C minor 7 F minor 7 B flat 7 but then sort of introducing each chord like hello you can come in right with a secondary dominant that leads to each of those chords and it sounds more complicated than it is the tonic again we're leaving it like it is our next chord would be the C minor. And then we're thinking like, okay, if there would only be a C minor chord, forget about the key. And we would want to have the five chord of the C minor chord. What would the five chord of the C minor chord? That would be the G7, right? So we could play G7 leading to C minor. Our next chord is the F minor. We're thinking the same stuff. How could we introduce this chord a little bit more? So we're thinking about the F minor. Just <laughs> no key. There's an F minor chord. What would be the 5, the C7? And then last but not least we can do the same thing with the B flat and it would be an F7 that is leading to the B flat and then the B flat of course itself already leads to the E flat major. And if we want to maybe put that into a chord progression, an idea that I would have is to play this sort of arrow chord that points to the next chord, that's the way I see it, on the four. Just like play it rather shortly and then play the chord that you would normally play. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So 
But the last thing that I want to say before I get into Tropez is you can also play a G minus seven chord instead of the E flat major chord, right? They um, have a lot of notes in common and you sort of can interchange them. It's a minor seven chord. It's not to be confused with a minor seven chord on the second degree, right? They have the same formula. They're both minor seven chords, but they have different tasks in a chord progression, if you want so. And the G minor seven's task can be sometimes to sort of substitute or replace the tonic. So let's play a G minor seven chord instead of an E flat major chord. So we would have G minor, C minor, F minor seven. And then we can do the same thing, sorry, tonic, and change all those chords into dominant seventh chords except for the tonic. So we have the G7, C7, F7. So now I resolved it to the tonic, right? And and you can do all the same stuff to this chord progression as well, thinking about triton substitute. But so this is just an overview of stuff that can happen in a 1625. So let's check out the first 1625 from Tropez, which is like this thing that I just played in the beginning. right so and then we look what's happening later so this is a disguised 1625 in E flat I'm also selling this mug <laughs> I really I really love this mug it also has a little bird under the under the coffee if maybe I can show you later <laughs> so he's playing this E flat major 7 chord for the tonic which I get you get and then we have this D flat already going to the C minor. So this D flat chord here, right, we can already understand it. It's the tritone substitution of the G7 going to the C minor. And then he's picking a voicing, right? You have the theory, but then you also have the application, the musical one. So this is like a D flat nine chord without a three. And he's just like playing a melody, right? I always like to play only the melody without the chords. To hear what's it really about. So he's playing the tonic, then the tritone substitute of the secondary dominant, C minus or six chord. And here we just have a nice, you can, sugar coated right those notes here this is c minor but those notes here e flat f g and b flat they all stem from the e flat key right from the e flat scale so basically he's harmonizing notes from the e flat scale with the c minor it's also a little like new so <laughs> whatever and then he's going to this thing here. And if you have a look at your shell voicing, the C7, and then you have a, put this A, this is the 13, and then the D, the 9. That's the chord he's playing here, but only without the root. Then it would look like this. And again, it's a C7, so he transformed the C minor into a C7 chord and then he just like moved A to the A, f sharp, a flat or G sharp it's just like a voice leading you're absolutely allowed to do it and you could like resolve it to an F minor here Right, so because we're still in our 1625 and this is the 2 chord. But he's not choosing this voicing, but he's playing an F minor 7. He's playing this voicing. Nothing else than this chord, right? That we 
all know. And instead of playing the A flat, he's playing the B flat. So this is nothing else than what he's playing here. With the with the difference that this one is hard to play. into the B flat of 5 chord with the chromatic approach from above. And here the melody. And now we would expect that he's going back to the 1, right? Because we played all the chord of the 1, 6, 2, 5. But he doesn't go there. He's playing this thing here. I don't know if you can feel how this G7 sort of feels like home a little bit. Because this G7 right stems from the G minor 7 that I talked before. The G minor 7 that can replace our tonic and that also can be a secondary dominant. So this chord is sort of the tonic and this A flat is sort of the visitor or the arrow chord that I talked about earlier that's pointing to the G7, right? So, so you can always move chromatically into a chord. It really doesn't matter from above or from below, but it matters that you land in the right place in the end, right? But up till that point you can shift chromatically the f out of it if you want to. <laughs> okay, so now we are here and he's just like playing those so he's sort of playing shell voicings if you want to write like A flat. Here we have the C7 again. So a C7 chord instead of the C minor chord. We have a cool voicing. We have a flat 9 and a flat 13. Leading to the F minor and he's playing an F minor. And then playing this B flat 7 flat 9 chord or 5 chord. Another voicing for the B flat, a 13. And resolving it finally to the tonic E flat major 9. And another voicing for the E flat. Now we're home. So two bars of a 1, 6, 2, 5 transforming the second 1, 6, 2, 5. We are transforming the 1 into a 3 chord which adds a little more move movement and sort of prolongs this feeling of tension and release. So just remember that different ways of harmonizing a melody you can harmonize a melody using different chords of the same chord. So using a lot of E flat major voicings in the bar where you have that chord symbol E flat major but you can also think about a lot of other stuff. You can think about transforming the chord into a dominant seventh chord. You can think about playing dominant seventh chords to get to this point where you want to go and a lot of other stuff. Just want to recommend that you try to play this passage of this song. You don't always have to understand everything but it's a very good technical exercise if you can play it. Just play it and then if you take one thing out of this lesson it could be a chord shape, it could be a concept and try to apply this one thing and really get it ingrained in your system, that's already very good and it's not the goal to like know everything and can play everything at once, but you really take it step by step and take the time to play around with it and then you have the most fun. So I see you around next week, goodbye!